cards, pal. Give me two. How many do you take? Two for you, and the dealer takes one. I bet five lovely rubies. I see you five, and I raise you three. You're bluffing. Try me. I'm in. What do you got? Flush. What do I owe you now? To keep it simple, 500,000 Spanish doubloon and two and a half bucks cash for your share of the map. For this? Where'd you get this? Three finger jack. Only 11 Spanish galleons? I think three finger jack is hustling us. I don't think so. There's the rocks. Okay, who goes over first? How many times? Once. Go Gee, away! Rock. Your dance. Black. Wrong.
Black eight on a red nine. Oh, thanks. Find anything? Yeah, a couple of nosy sharks. Hey, at least you had company. <laughs> Any sign of the uh, 11 galleons? No. Oh, you must have seen something down there. Yeah, dead blonde. A dead blonde? Was she pretty? She's one blonde I know didn't have more fun. Coast Guard, this is Straight Pass calling Coast Guard, over. Straight Pass, this is Coast Guard. This is Straight Pass. I'd like to report a body floating off Fowey Rocks. Is it a hazard to navigation? Is it a hazard to navigation? No, just a dead, wet blonde hanging around on a block of cement. Over and out. Roger, Straight Pass. Hazard to navigation. <laughs> Postmortems give me gas. And I think I had a brilliant future in pediatrics. Okay, Jerome, okay. She was dead before she went in. Hardly any water in her lungs. What killed her? A knife with a long, narrow blade. Driven in under the breastbone, up into her heart, and then it was pulled out. Anything else turned up in the autopsy? No, except that she never delivered any babies, though she definitely had relations with men. She would have made a natural mother. Is that all? Mm-hmm. What a pelvis. What a pelvis. <laughs> Dumping people in cement. That went out with violent cases. Whoever did it had no reason to expect she'd ever be found. Whoever did it doesn't know much. He dropped to where 11 Spanish galleons sank in a hurricane in 1591, loaded with silver and gold. Ma, why don't you just hand him the maps? Buy him a scuba suit. Things slow on the vice squad, Reuben, you can go off and play games? I had a busy week. I personally closed two plays, put six belly dancers out of business, and personally attended several love ins. I need a rest. Yeah, vice runs you down, you know. You ought to know. And what's the matter? No clients? Are you worried about me, Dave? You're the only guy I know who owns a yacht and eats leftover TV dinners. Cold yet. Lieutenant? Yeah. Picture file for missing person. Thanks. See you around, Dave. Hey, you're not through yet, Tony. What do you mean? We found her. She's yours now. Well, there's not enough left of her to recognize. How about fingerprints? There aren't any. See if she's one of these. Yeah. It's Manny. Who? Your bookie. Oh, that Manny. I'm out of town. A little short. The pictures. The pictures. He's out of town. How the hell do I know where Rome is? And listen, Manny, you book one more bet off this line, I'm gonna run you in for impersonating a female. I keep telling him he looks lousy in a miniskirt. She ain't here, Dave. Well, there'll be more coming in. The story's already on radio and television. Now, look, don't keep calling me down every 15 minutes because some blonde runs out on her husband. You got something better to do? Yes, I have. Come on, let's hoist the martini flag. Excuse me, Lieutenant. John, dear. Uh-huh. Is it okay, honey? Yeah, yeah. Now go clean the bait buckets. And after that? I'll think of something. Okay. Hiya, Tony. I got a good thing for you in the fort. The last thing you gave me was snowshoes. But this is a sure thing. Then why don't you bet it? I play horses. Any messages? Bertie, any messages for Tony? Oh, yes, John, dear. Well, what are you gonna do? Keep it a secret? You wrote it down, honey. That's right. It's between the 7th and the 8th. Your answering service. I think you got a new client. Give me the message, they said John. It's very urgent. All they gave me was an address. No name, just an address. No name.
Which one are you? Sandra or Maria? Hey, that's funny. I like a guy with a sense of humor. Mm. You got anything else funny to say? Yeah, what sells best, the frozen peas or the corn? Ho, ho, ho. You gotta be kidding. Toss it over on the chair. Easy. It was a very gutsy thing you just tried. I like gutsy guys. You're pretty fast for a big man. Yeah. Surprises, folks. It surprised some of them right to death. Now, who are you? I'm a private detective. Somebody called me up. Called me to meet him here. Give me your wallet. Yeah, you're the one. I sent for you, Rome. Well, you can put that cannon away. I'm a little insecure. Sorry about that. Just being careful. You know how it is. Yeah. Have a seat. Comfy? Yeah. Now, that blonde dame you picked up in the drink, what'd she look like? Dead. Yeah, did she have a, a birthmark right here? No, 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 I didn't get that close to her. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't have been Sandra anyway. When she goes, it'll be in a sack, and she'll take the guy with her. You're hired. I don't appear nosy, but I hired to do what? I gotta find Sandra. She's supposed to live in this place with a Spanish broad, but she ain't showed. Why don't you check with the Spanish dame? I got my reasons. You're gonna find her for me. Okay. But it'll cost you about a hundred bucks a day plus expenses. I'm a little low on cash at the moment. <laughs> that puts us in the same bracket. I don't think my bookmaker would understand my taking a charity case at this moment. All right. Here. You can get 300 bucks for that in any hawk shop, but hang on to the ticket. I'll buy it back from you when I lay my hands on some dough. Yeah, okay. Just one more thing. Why do you try and find this girl? All you need to know is I told you to find her. And, pal, when I tell a guy to do something, it ain't healthy not to do it. Believe me. Oh, I believe you. You got a very sincere manner. Good. I like cooperative guys. Listen, uh, how do I find you? You don't. I'll find you. And don't tell me, pal. I like guys who don't tell me. Furthest thing from my mind. What's your name? Gronsky. Waldo Gronsky. Waldo? Waldo. Buy a girl a drink? I bet we could relate real good. I'm broke. You have to try me another time. You're still in love? I'm looking for Maria Barreto. Mm, she's the one with the mirrors. Oh, if you're broke, forget it. There's always the nice warm sunshine. Oh, but who's gonna rub your back when you burn, baby? That's a print. I gotta go express myself. Um, why don't you grab yourself some loot and come back, lover? I could turn you on. I think you already did. Hello there. Looking for a little excitement? Maybe. What brand did you have in mind? I got all kinds of notions once I'm in the mood. A couple of drinks puts you in a better mood. You're hip. So how's about a bottle of champagne? Why not? Waiter. Yeah? Bring a magnum. I want a champagne. Give her anything she wants. Yes, sir. 
What's your name, honey? Tony Rome. I'm looking for Sandra Lomax. Your friend of hers? Sort of. Well, Sandra never told me anything about you. She never told me anything about you either. It's a small world. Ain't it? Mm -hmm. Who wants to talk about Sandra? You don't get along? We do, we don't. She has this habit of getting lost every time the rents do. When did you see her last? Uh, last night when she went to uh, Kit Forrest's party. You, you know that society dish. Yeah, I read her name in the garbage columns. <laughs> you know something? Uh. I like you. You got a cigarette? interested in Sandra? No, no. You're way out in front now. <laughs> you got any pictures hey. of Sandra? What? You mind very much if I give you a little tip. No. Why don't you stay away from her? The kid's got a boyfriend. I asked a question. You got any pictures of Sandra? No, she never took any pictures. Just guys. Maria, darling. I hear oodles and oodles of repartee, but I don't see any drink. Ah, uh, hi, Danny. Uh, he was just asking me about Sandra. Danny Yale, Tony Rome. How do you do? How are you? How about you getting up there and moving that uh, fatty tissue, just like we choreographed? Well, it, it's, it's not my turn again. To Forget that. it. Can't you hear? They're screaming for you. We just you. ordered some champagne. Forget it. All right, baby, we'll drink it later at your house. Promise? That's a contract. Okay. See you later. I spotted her in a choir. What, then? She's the one that brings them in around here. She's lousy. Oh, and you're a critic. Like you're a dance director. Tell me about that other great piece of talent, Sandra Lomax. What's it to you, sweet? Well, you see, I got this here off-white block piece of cement. I'm trying to match up with a blonde. You're talking about that girl they fished out of the ocean this morning? The very same. Well, that couldn't have been Sandra, Dreamboat. Now, just why couldn't that have been Sandra? Because she got in touch with me this afternoon. She told me she was quitting. Well, that leads me to two conclusions. You're lying. Oh. Seymour! Sugar, please. Thank you. Now, listen, sweetie. I don't have to tell you anything. True. But I could get persuasive. And you might even get to like it. <laughs> but Seymour wouldn't. And he played tailback for the Green Bay Packers. I know, I know. I saw him play. He had the league record for illegal use of hands. In the huddle yet. <laughs>
Well, shall I scream rape now or wait and phone in a complaint? If you're asking me, I'd rather you press charges. You're not a holdover from yesterday's bash. Now, you left me off your list. Whew. I can't think why everyone else was here. My name is Rome, Tony Rome. I'm a private detective. How disappointing. And I thought you were someone dangerous. I'm Kit Forrest. Yes, I know. Any trouble? No, no trouble. I'm trying to locate somebody. I thought maybe you could help me. Say, can't we discuss this over a bull shot? Over a bull what? Try one. No, I never drink on an empty stomach. Uh, I always seem to need another. Uh, Miss Forrest, about that party you gave last night. Isn't this bar ghastly? It's supposed to be one of Father's collection of early American pornography. He was such a lecher. Was Sandra Lomax at your party last night? Sandra? Yeah. Well, um, I'm not sure. What do you mean, you're not sure? Well, to tell you the truth, I, uh, I got kind of smashed early in the evening. I have what you might call a drinking problem. I wouldn't have noticed. Oral compensation. That's what I call it. What's your shrink call it? Just being a drunk. You're a member of a large club. I wonder how I would have turned out if I hadn't inherited a fortune. Oh, I could think of a couple of occupations. You see, money does have its restrictions. <laughs> yeah. You're broadening me, but I'm still in the dark about Sandra Lomax. If she was here last night, who was she with? <laughs> Mr. Rome, you don't really expect me to know the people I invite. I don't expect you to tell me anything you don't want to. And that robe is making me nervous. You don't like it? But that wouldn't get me any answers. I'm sorry. What do you say I slip out of this bath now? It could all come back to me. Mm. I'll only be a minute. Oh, and if you need anything, there's a butler. Be more fun with the maid. I have one of those, too. this for money. How do you expect me to be good if I don't bet myself? You've got to keep your eye on the ball. How can he keep his eye on the ball? All his life he's been looking back to see us chasing him. Hello? Oh, hello, my dear. You did right, sweetheart. Just don't say nothing. We'll be right over. Come on, boy, we got an appointment. in a while. You're a hunch player like me? No, I lose my money scientifically. <laughs> Excuse me. About last night, you were asking me to refresh my memory. There's a, someone who might help me. Hi. Hi. You look beautiful. Thank you. Don't she look nice? Well, say it. She's beautiful. You was well advised to call, my dear. Well advised. 
Is this the bum's been bothering you? Well, Mr. Al Munger, pillar of the community. This is my red letter day for meeting the upper crust. First a shark, now the barracuda. I'd be careful with that mouth of yours. I could put my foot in it. You uh, know Mr. Munger? Like I know Bonnie and Clyde. Well, this is his son, Paul. Tony Rowe. My son and business consultant. Which department? Blood banks? You. You and me are going for a little walk. Paul, you stay here with Kit. Al, listen, I... Please, relax. I'm not allowed to get mad these days. Doctor's orders. I'd feel a hell of a lot calmer if I could get another medical opinion. Ain't gonna be no problem. Don't worry, Miss Forrest. Whatever he doesn't break, I get to keep. Hey, you could have gotten rid of me with one small scream. Come on, Mr. Rome. We walk. We walk. <laughs> You know, Paul and Kid would make a beautiful couple. You never know, they could wind up married. Yeah, the gang in cell block eight would love that. For well, your information, wise guy, my boy made all American in Amherst. And you're not ashamed? With all those other guys burning their draft cards, your kid becomes an all American? One, two, one, two. <laughs> out of your mind. Oh. Ooh, company. This is business. Ain't you gonna introduce me? Go lose yourself for an hour. What am I supposed to do? Read a book. For a whole hour? Look at the pictures. Reminds me, I gotta get Santini's kid a catcher's mitt. I told you, get it out of your mind. I wonder what part of her I paid for. I lost a few thousand bucks in your gambling joints. That's the old manga. Everything I run now is legit. Like Jilly's? That's a respectable business. Oh, yeah. I met the queen who runs it. Tell me something, Al. What's your noble concern about this little girl over here? She's my neighbor. You go over once in a while and borrow a couple bullets? Now look, Rome. Just because I'm wearing a white hat now don't mean I can't hire some pro to put you in traction for roping us. You make me blow up. I like to be nice to people. Now get out of here and stay away from that girl. And this broad, too. Car 77 to proceed to 85 Meridian. Resident claims there is a drunk molesting her. Car 46 go to St. Agnes Convent. Mother Superior charges nuns have it stolen from laundry. She was knifed, nice and clean. What are you doing here? Give me a minute, I'll think of something. Did you know her? Yeah, we talked. I got two murders on my hands. If you got something, give it to me. I could throw you a few hints, Dave. You might start at Jilly's, where there's a fun couple named Danny Yale and a butch girlfriend named Seymour. Or you could find Al Munga and lean on him a little bit. And, last but not least, there's a very good-looking broad who's got a crazy breaststroke named Kit Forrest. What ties them all together? Could be cement. <laughs> That's good news. How are the next treating you? Hey, who knows some next? I don't get horses. What's in the next? Is the room up? I think so. Good morning, Tony. Hello, Dave. What are you looking for? My shoe. Why don't you try the icebox? That's where I keep my ties. 
A few more blondes from missing persons. I talked to Kit Forrest. She said you've been around to see her. I asked her about Sandra Lomax. That's right. She said she told you all she knew. Did you try to squeeze her a little bit? You got any idea who she is? Yeah. Thirty million dollars worth of influence. And I also gather that while you're in the neighborhood, you dropped over to see Mr. Mungar. Yeah. You paid a call, asked him some questions. He didn't have the answers. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You didn't squeeze him either, did you? A lot of important people like him. Yeah, he gives a lot of money to little league ball clubs at funeral parties. What about Danny Yale? He never left Chili's. But I got a lead on the Maria Barreto killing. No. The woman who lives across the street said she saw a man run out of Maria's houseboat. An unusually big man in a suit too small for him. Color suit, brown? Yeah. Yeah, you know who he is? The hell you don't. I figured you weren't following up Maria Barreto's lead just out of curiosity. Now, what are you up to? Nothing. Now, Dave, listen to me. I got a lady coming over here in a little while, and I promised her to give her a diving lesson. It wouldn't be good for your morale. Now, look, Tony, don't hold out on me. See you a minute? Mm-hmm. Hey, the lady's with me. We're all friends, don't worry. Listen, enjoy the show. Won't take me long. Ain't it murder? They never have any towels in these joints. So, three hookers have been robbed in this area in the past week. I got the job. You want to make 35 cents? Hey, don't laugh. I had three offers already today. I want to know about a guy named Waldo Gronsky. The mad Russian? I haven't seen him since I picked him up for a gas station last a few years back. What else you know about him? Hey, he's strictly a loner. He's been heisting cat houses, banks ever since he was a kid. Sounds like a tough customer. Tough? He's crazy considering some of the things he's done. Like what? Oh, well, like heisting the big boys in the floating poker games. That could be a dangerous occupation. <laughs> dangerous? I think we did Gronsky a favor when we picked him up. How come? Well, the word was out that he heisted a bundle for one of the big boys the same week. Which big boy? I don't know, but I know somebody was after him. How did you find out? Oh, anonymous phone tip from a guy. Well, now that he's out, where does he hang his hat, this guy? I don't know. I can make a phone call. The uh, parole officer would know. OK, make the call. OK. Wait a minute, dearie. You got your purse. Oh, here we should get. Let's go. Thanks. There you go, pal. I told her it wouldn't take long. She's all yours. Thanks. Unwind me. All you broads are all alike. Get lost. Men.
you know. Just you? Mm-hmm. Just like last time. Only different. This time, I got the gun and the questions, and you got the answers. Now, just lift that cannon out of your belt and throw it over here. Why don't you come take it off me? Now, look, if you're trying to scare me, you're doing a hell of a job. You also scare my trigger finger now. Get that thing out of there and throw it over here. Why the gun, pal? I'm a client, remember? Uh-huh. That's why I'm going to give you a chance to tell your side of it. She was seen running out of the Barreto houseboat. And she was found stabbed. She was that way when I got there. Hey, wait a minute. If the fuzz is after me, how's come they ain't here? Because all they got's a description of you. They ain't tied it to you yet. Well, I didn't puncture the Barreto, Dame. I mean, why should I? It's Sandra I want to get my hands on. Why? I just wrapped up two years in the joint on account of that bitch gratted on me. You sure it was her? Couldn't have been nobody else. She was the only one I knew where I was holed up. Wait a minute. You didn't hire me to take care of one of your personal beefs. Now, why do you want this chick? My business. No, I'm dealing. Says which? This 38 says which. That? Oh, pal. A little 38 slug ain't gonna stop me. Now, hold it. Now, let me plug you now. No, I wouldn't. It might make me sore. Put the heater on the table. Don't be dumb, Gronsky. This ain't no 38 I'm holding. A 45 will blow your head off at this range. Okay, Chef. Who are you? Uh, I'm a registered nurse, but if this ain't a convenient time, I can go. Remain. What are we going to do with him? We can't leave him here. Oh, we can leave him. Dead. Hey, why bother with me? No trouble. Right between the eyes. Outside, where the water's nice and deep. All right, let's move. Uh, 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 uh. You wouldn't want me to leave without my garment, would you? All right, let's move. Hey, maybe we could uh, kick this around and meet the press, huh? Come on, come on, let's move. Beautiful day, huh? Yeah. Stay loose. What? I said that. Stay loose. Drinks. That other bastard nearly tore my leg off. Give me the hell out of here. I know a place where I can hold up. Where? Mabel's parlor over on 123rd Street. Hey, didn't you ever hear Diet Foods? Stop with the jokes and get me to Mabel's. Yeah. That tears it. All right, get in the car. Give me the gun. And the other one. Greedy. Let's go. Stay loose, pal. Again?
You know he could have your badge for police brutality? Huh? Any trouble with him? No, sir. Good. If you start something, don't hesitate to use your weapon. Well, I think I can manage to keep the prisoner subdued without resorting to the use Look, of... Look, Levine, one of these days you're going to have to decide between going to a civil liberties benefit or a policeman's ball. Yes, sir. How's your head? I never have any trouble in my head. How are you doing, pal? Better than you are, Waldo. You're charged with number one, Gronsky. Not to mention roughing up two policemen and damaging a patrol car. You're a menace to urban renewal. That old lady just signed a statement that you were the one she saw run out of Maria's houseboat. Yeah. Did you get out clean? Yeah, those two bums had a record as long as a phone book. Well, nobody regrets their loss. Nobody except maybe Al Munger. And he says he doesn't know them. Or you. Is that a fact? Is it? What's Munger got against you? I don't know. Maybe he's jealous I give more to boys down. I got another job for you, pal. They're pinning a bum rap on me. Lieutenant, my arms juice, please. If it's a bum rap, open up and be honest with us for a change. What? So you can use every word to sew me up tighter? Rome isn't likely to turn up something we can't. <laughs> Lieutenant, the law works for the law. Rome works for money. That makes him easy to trust. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. You've been throwing me like a knuckleball. Too many people die around you. For 5,000 bucks? I'm in, I'm in. Here. You can get five grand for that any place. Check it out, Lieutenant. It ain't hot. Now, you get it if you can prove that I didn't kill that brother girl. If you can't, you give it back. Then I use it to hire myself a smart lawyer. Who will tell you that I got a right to talk to my eye alone. Right now, you're lucky to have bedpan privileges. I want some answers. Uh, I am very nauseous and in no condition to be grilled. Look, I'm warning you, Gronsky. Lieutenant, can't you see my client has had a very grueling day? OK, you got five minutes. You think this place is bugged? If it is, Waldo, they're in a lot of trouble. Now, tell me something. While you were watching that houseboat, who else went in or out of that house beside the girl? A guy. A guy went in while the Barreto gal was out. Let himself in with the key, hung around a few minutes, and came out with a couple of suitcases. What did he look like? Well, he, he had on some motorcycle glasses, a lot of hair around the ears. Was he by chance wearing tight pants? Yeah. Yeah, you don't pants the tight, you gotta roll him. I'll get this cleaned. Hey, Rome. You know him? We're not too crazy about each other. What have you got? A complaint. There's a night nurse on this floor who's been making improper advances toward my client. <laughs> came in the other day, Danny. Honey Sherwin's pretty good. He caught the real you, didn't he? If you got the hot stream boat, you are in the wrong room. Uh, you're the one who turns me on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Seymour has a jealous streak. What the hell you want? I'm just curious why Sandra didn't pick up her things when she left the bungalow. I told you. 
I do not have to talk to you. That's true. But I couldn't make a pain in the ass of myself. How do you know she didn't? Because you did. You were seen coming out of there with the baggage. So I picked her things up. What's that supposed to mean? She asked me to drop them off at the airline baggage terminal. Said she had a lot to do. You're a tender one, aren't you, Danny? Yeah, dame quits on you and you go through all this trouble for her? No trouble. She was a good kid. She was a good kid? She ain't here now. That's all I know. Neither is Maria Barreto. Poor kid. Yeah. You know, you keep losing girls like this, you may have to turn a few tricks yourself. Look, I hope the bastard that killed Maria gets the chair. He will. And if it turns out that Sandra got dead before you picked up her things, you could be in a lot of trouble. Accessory to murder. Trouble. Oh, big trouble. Conversation is over. You know, you could spill everything you know now before the cops make you do it the hard way. Think about it. He told you butt out. What's the matter? Am I making him nervous? Seymour, if he does not walk out of here now, I want to hear him bounce. Move, or I'm going to throw a block into you, baby, for keeps. Ah! Ah! Seymour! Seymour? Seymour! Would you like to try that again for instant replay? Sweetheart. Ticket on number five. Three tickets on number six. Give me a ticket on number three. The horses are on the track, ladies and gentlemen, for the final race of the day. The Gulfstream Park Handicap. Hi. Your answering service finally gave you the message. Yeah, they got me. I waited for you at home as long as I could. Remember me? I was told to keep out of your neighborhood. Al Munger? He likes to keep an eye on me. What does he do with his other eye? The horses are at the gate. It's not what you think. He's really very sweet. Oh, he's a lovely man. <laughs> lovely man. What did you want from me, Miss Forrest? Look, it's a lovely day. Can't we enjoy the races together? Smart move. They're all in the gate. The flag is up. What's yours on this one? Fancy that. Oh, that's my pick, too. Sorry. And they're off and running. Clark broke on top of the 31st and Wild Page, a close second. Coming past the stands for the first time. It's Clark on the track. Wild Page second on the rail. Dance on third. Come on, Clark! Come on, Clark! Come on, Clark! Hey! When you want to yell in a winner, you gotta cool it. Play it cool. Oh. That's the secret, Mr. Rowe. Right. Well, you've got no chance with me. I'm a loser. Not with me, you won't be. in front by one leg, the spoiler on the outside, and aces up in the middle of the track. Out of the turn and into the stretch, it's Bud in front. The spoiler second, aces up third, and fancy that is flying along the rail. Come on! Who won? We did. You know, we just may be good for each other. That's a nice thought. Hang on to it. Get your bag. Let's go. Five's the point. The lady's point is five. Shoot up to the five. Six and a four, ten. Two, 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 two
400 soap when it was Come on, lady, shoot the dice. About two on those. I'll take 50. 200. Careful, Charlie's taking 200. 150's open. Hey, Tony, you want some? No, I'm empty. Come on, lady. 150's still open. 150's open. 150 open. 150 open. Hey, Tony. She's had the dice for over an hour. She likes to hold on to things. Where'd you find this ring? In the yellow pages. Well, congratulations. Call me anytime. 150's open. 150 open. How, How much do you want? They don't plunge. 145's now open. Covered. All right, lady, shoot. Please, sir, you're scratching the casket. Quiet, Melvin, shoot, lady. Be there, baby. The purge is four. Fifty says she makes it. She don't need no help. I gentlemen, gentlemen, it's getting late, and this lovely casket is scheduled for delivery. Quiet, Melvin. The lady's point is still four. Hey, little Joe. Mr. Rome. Yes? You're reclining on our custom casket. You'll scratch it. You know, the fella you're eventually going to put in here won't know the difference. Don't worry about it. Oh, thank you, sir. All right, dear. The lady's point is four. Gentlemen, please, please. Quiet, Come Melvin. On. The lady's point is still four. Three Hope. Seven. Be there. Oh. Little Joe, the hard way. Well, I guess that about does it, lady. I missed the roll. Yeah. Henceforth, on any future floating crap game that I arrange, I wish to inform you as of this date that this broad is to be personally excluded. Understood? Understood. Agreed? Agreed. I thank you. It's all right. Uh, I got a sneaking suspicion you would not break down if I gambled in a different morgue. Lady, please, don't come back soon, huh? You're cute. Here. I'm cute. Hey, you talk funny. Very quiet on the way out, please. We'll leave as quiet as we were going out horizontally. Thank you. That would be lovely. Good night. Ta ta. Senorita Forrest, I owe you my life. You bring me here to this country. You helped me all these years. Well, this, this. Bugs me. Tony, you want an onion on this one? No, thanks. I have tried to call this uh, Annie Jerwin bomb on the phone six times already. He never answered. To find out what they off with this stuff, he's sticky like glue. When did it happen? The night he told me he come from your party. Yeah, your party. And he walk in here stinky drunk. And he said to me, I want that wall. <laughs> and I said to him, listen, my friend, that wall belonged to Paco Gonzalez. And he said to me, that wall belonged to, uh, to uh, prosperity. What a lousy thing to say to a Cuban. But anyway, when I tried to, to stop him, he was like a crazy man. I think it looks pretty nice, Paco. It's beautiful. Beautiful, maybe for a men's room, but not for a family pool hall. Can you imagine a father come here with his kids to chew the pool, okay? And he line up a chat over here, take a one look at the wall, look at the cagang, finish the whole thing. I think you got a problem. Paco, what's the matter with you? People pay Arnie Sherwin a lot of money for a mural like this. They pay him a lot of money for dicks? <laughs> what a crazy country. No, 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 but I wouldn't do that, Buck. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Some for the road, huh? Are we going steady now? Since 4 o'clock this afternoon. What time is it now? Sometime before 3. I think it's about time. Uh, you got some chili on your pretty dress. Yeah. Your place or mine? I got a crazy spot ring moment. Buenas noches, Paco. Bourbon a good spot remover? That's about what you're trying to forget. I'll have mine on the rocks. You drink too much. You smoke too much. Well, we gotta go our separate ways. You call me today, what did you want? You want that out of the way first? You said it was urgent. Well, I have an insatiable longing for affection. Is that urgent enough? Not quite. We've been playing a lot of funny games since we left the racetrack. Now, what the hell do you want? 
I want to hire you. For what? Well, when Sandra came to my party the other night, she... She owed me a picture someone had taken of me. It was a nasty picture with a married man. She said if I wanted the negative, I'd better come up with $5,000. And a man would be around to pick it up the next day. So when I showed up, you thought I was a man. And that's how Munger got into it. I didn't know who else to call. And Al said to turn to him when the blackmailer came. Did this guy ever show up? No. But then, late last night, I got a phone call from Sandra. She said to send the 5000 to Jane Smith, care of General Delivery, Las Vegas. You want to hire me to go to Vegas to try to pick up that negative and then hang around there until I find Sandra? Is that it? I'll pay you the usual fee, plus a bonus. What's a bonus? You tell me. How about $30 million? That shouldn't be too steep to get that body off the slab and a Connie Morgan ship it to Vegas. I don't know what you're talking about. I told you I just talked to Sandra last night. What don't you believe? All of it. Why? Because you're moving toward me a little bit too fast. I figure you got a deal and you want to bargain for something I want. And you don't want it? I didn't say that. When I want it, I don't want to trade for it. Just what do you figure I want to trade? I'm not too sure. But I know it's not that phony picture you're talking about. You think I can afford to let that be passed around? You can afford anything, Miss Forrest. Maybe even Al Munger. Maybe you're the kind of damn collects hoods. I used to know abroad collected bullfighters. You are a bastard, Mr. Rome. My mother wouldn't like that. Yeah. Arnie Sherwin in? He know you? Not yet. I'm Tony Rome, friend of Kit Forrest. Oh, come in. I'm his receptionist, you know. Everyone wants Arnie to do him, so I got to screen him, you know. That's me. He sure gets down to the gut level, don't he? He lost a hell of a lot of weight, baby. Arnie, can I go to the John? No, don't move a muscle. Arnie? Yeah? He's a friend of Kip Forrest's. Oh, yeah, sure. I've seen you around. Oh, where? For parties, right? But I didn't make the last one. Were you there? Listen, when she puts in the call, I run. See all this? She set it up. All those social contacts. How do you think I made it on town? I wouldn't know. I'm a detective. A cop? Oh, come on. I kicked the habit months ago. I'm take straight it easy. Honest. Take it easy. Take it easy. All I want is some answers. Uh, you don't mind if they stay, do you? They kind of relax me. Yeah, me too. Arnie, can I go to the John? No! How about the party at Kit Forrest's house the other night? Did you meet a girl named Sandra Lomax? No, she split before we got there. You know her? Sure. How'd the party get started? Well, there was the four of them, uh, Yale and Sandra, Kit and Paul Munger. They went over to Kit's house together. Paul Munger? Well, sure. Kit's been hot for him for at least a month. Was Kit alone when you got there? Well, it was, everybody was drinking a lot, you know, Kit. Uh, but it wasn't big enough, so Yale and Paul went out to try to dig up a mob. Yale picked me up, and then uh, Paul came in with his crowd later. Arnie, please, can I go to the John? No! no! Tell me something, was Kit alone when you got there? Stoned. She never saw us. Paul put her to bed and the party went on without her. What about the Lomax kids? You ever come back? Uh-uh. The way I got it, she and Kit had a fight before we got there. About what? Well, who knows with broads? Think it might be something important like peace? Yeah. Did you ever do a sketch of Sandra Lomax? No. Think you could do one from memory? Easy, except I don't draw on spec. I know, I can see you have a large family. How's 20? I should smudge my fingers for that. Hey, I don't want the whole body, just the face. You don't even have to sign it. Arnie, please! Go ahead, baby. Thank you.
Homicide, Santini. Dave there? He's left for the day. Okay. Hey, Tiger. Uncle Tony! Hi, son. How you feel? Great. Where's everybody? Hey, Rose, look what's showing up. Tony. Hello, Dave. Hi, Tony. Rose. Hi. Fine. What happened to his chin? Fell off of my skateboard. Oh, the way Dave rushed home, he thought he had a concussion or something. Hey, you'll stay for lunch, won't you? Please. Okay, you talked me into it. What'd you bring me this time? It's a big surprise. Close your eyes. Open. Boy, a catcher's mitt. Just what I wanted. How'd you know? Well, I get those hot flashes once in a while. Gee, thanks, Tony. Okay. Come on, Tiger. I need you in the kitchen. Hey, uh, Dave. Yeah. The dame in the morgue is Sandra. How do you know? Here's an artist drawing of her. Hey, Rose, that's pretty good lasagna. It wasn't lasagna, it was quiche Lorraine. I'll get it. Tony, how long have you got to go to school to be a detective? All the way, son. To the sixth grade? Yep, exactly. And that's just long enough to learn to read lipstick prints on a paper cup. Gee. Here's my spitter. It's not legal. You're a wise guy. Here's a slider. Time. I think I threw my arm out. Rose? Yeah? Isn't it time for that kid to take his bath? Dave. Now. But Dave, it's Rose, okay. Rose, please. It's okay, Mom. I know Dad's feeling bad. Tomorrow. I'll take you fishing or something. But you don't have to go, unless you want to. I want to. So long, pal. So long, Dad. Come on, Tiger. So long, Tiger. So long, Uncle Tiger. See you, Rose. What the hell's the matter with you? What's eating? Danny Yale was found in his club, dead. The knife off your boat in his belly. Well, my fingerprints all over, right? Go we'll check out. And the witness who was there says he saw it all. Mr. Munger's got a tape, doesn't he? Sure, I had a beef with Yale. It's a frame, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but it's a tight one. I gotta take you in, Tony. But you'll get all the help I can give you. Against Munga? <laughs> I'll kid yourself. You couldn't drag him downtown to question him after you pulled that poor broad out of the bay. What, are you gonna be my character witness? You're gonna tell him we were once cops together and I have dinner here once in a while? I'm sorry. Me too. You know better, Tony. I gotta take you in. Dave, this frame's too tight. I've gotta stay loose so I can pin Munga. That's my job. You're not big enough for it. Hold it. I'm still taking you in. You gonna shoot me, Dave? Hit and run, personal injury. 61 Blue Ford Convertible. Last seen traveling south of 36th Street Causeway. License number 1W17. Come on, out of the car. Out. I'm Lieutenant out. Santini, Miami out. Homicide. Get your hands. Here's my Get identification. Here, read this, dope. Tell us about that woman you ran down on Bayshore Drive. What woman?
Hey, this guy is a cop. Thanks. You, radio headquarters. Tell him I spotted Ron with the fountain blow. Hey, you with the brains, come with me. Sure thing for you in the tent, Lord George. Malicious on the outside wouldn't help me. Look, by the way, there's a bunch of cops down here looking for you. Oh, that's nice of you to say what's as in between tips. Can you bust loose? I'm boxed in. There's a patrol boat out here waiting for me to lead them to you. And at the end of the dock, there's a bunch of cops with plain clothesmen, and they look like they're not interested in me. And at the other end of the dock over here, also plain clothesmen with cops, also not interested in me. Yeah, yeah. So we don't waste a dime and one the fifth at Gulfstream. Moisha the second. Box on that horse. Yeah, sad, ain't it? All around, it's a bad day for losers. Oh, pardon me, sir. I didn't know they uh, reassigned this cabana. You new in Miami? Mm-hmm. I could see that. I can do you a lot of good, pal. Matter of fact. Like, say you rent a car while you're here. You gotta pay by the mile, right? Hmm. So why pay it all? Just bring the car around to me. I know how to fix a speedometer. That way, you ride it around all you want, and when you take it back in, <laughs> shows maybe 10, 15 miles you gotta pay for. That sounds exciting. I figure, what the hell? I save a nice guy like you some dough that way. You'll probably pay me for my trouble out of what I save you, right? Seems logical. Like if you need a date, <laughs> I'm your boy on that line, too. Just tell me what you got in mind. Do you like the amateurs? There's plenty of free stuff down here on vacation I can put you next to. We interrupt our afternoon show to bring you a special news bulletin. Daniel Yale, manager of Jilly's, a well-known Miami Beach go-go club, was found stabbed to death yesterday in his office after an allegedly violent quarrel with Anthony Rome, a Miami Beach private detective. Police are now combing Miami for Rome, reported last seen traveling north on Collins Avenue in a stolen police car. We now return you to Daniel Boone. Now, uh, if you want more excitement, I know some broads that'll give you a hot time for the... What's that for? You are a walking encyclopedia full of information and I don't want to lose you. You're that... That guy they're looking for. The one we just saw on TV. That's me. Oh, geez, mister. You're not gonna... Not unless you become emotionally involved, I won't. Oh, please, mister. Don't shoot me with that. I only got six more payments left on my Ford. I'll tell the loan company where to send the flowers. I'll do anything. Just sit there and shut up. Me? I never was a big talker. Hold it right there, buddy. It gets better.
I didn't have a chance to put the flag down. Yeah, put the flag down. Does she go my logos on the deck? Doesn't Lionel throw the grooviest parties? I never miss him. <laughs> you looking for somebody, Lieutenant? Yeah, Captain, but I think we got him out. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I wonder if you could explain to me how the hell he got away in a police car. You want to go over that again? In connection with alarm previously submitted for one Anthony Rome, wanted for a homicide knife. He is presently believed to be in the area of the Fountain Blue Hotel. Cars 954-652-125 respond. Cover from all sides. Miss Flores? Yes? I don't want to alarm you, but there's a killer on the loose. Oh, well, if I see a killer, I'll call. Thank you. We're OK. They're gone. You got any idea where the penalty is for harboring a killer? Hadn't really given it much thought. Hey, you still don't trust me, do you? You just got funny neighbors. Here. You look like you need it. Thank you. You could still turn me in, you know. Uh, yeah. Is that why you came here? No, I'm tired of running. Why'd you lie to the cops? It's an old family tradition. Anyone who uh, is tired and helpless, give. It's a nice service. Mm. And I've got a strong charity drive. And right now, I'm just a kid who needs a little charity. Question. Yeah. Why is Munga protecting you? I told you. I don't buy it. Tell me. You gotta get out of Miami. Now, while I'm this busy? No, you've got to. You didn't kill Danny Yale. What makes you so sure? I know. Maybe I did it to cover up for you. Cover up for me? What? Murder. Oh, you can't mean that. Try me. And I'm stupid enough to think that this means something to you. Maybe it does. Before we ride on to any higher thrills, I want to hear your side of it. I can't remember. Maybe I can help you. This is how nice and pretty Sandra Lomax looked before they took her out of the water. Talk to me, kid. Paul and Yale left that girl with you the night of the party, and when they returned, she was gone because she was dead. And you dragged Mungar in to cover up for you. I can't remember. Whomever you're protecting's not helping you, kid. I'm used to it. Maria Barreto isn't. Who's Maria Barreto? She was Sandra's roommate. Munga, I forgot to mention her, huh? 
She was found knifed. It was done in order to keep me off your tail. And Danny Yale was killed for the very same reason. I didn't know anything about it. Does it matter? Yes, it does. Why? Tell me. Sandra and I were quarreling over Paul. And he thought it was a big joke. He kept egging us on and on and getting me so drunk. And I just don't remember it all. I guess that when Sandra and I were alone together, we got more violent. I'm not sure. I must have blacked out. When I woke up, she was lying on the floor, dead. And I found this in my hand, with her blood all over it. And I must have stabbed her. And you don't remember doing it? No. I was drunk. I blacked out. That happens, doesn't it? It's possible. You keep this thing around to remind yourself of it? Sir Levine. Oh. He was very unreasonable. I kept telling him I deplored violence. You'll be in surgery in a few minutes. You're going to be all right. Sterling, you want to tell me about it? It was horrible. Horrible. When I got here, Levine was hanging from that pulley in there, unconscious. Then Gronsky came after me. Yeah. That's all I remember. Nurse, were you on duty? Yeah. And? It was like the hurricane of 54. What about you, Doc? Well, I can't add anything. We'll have to wait for Officer Levine to come out of surgery. How long will that be? Difficult to say. Now, uh, tell me, uh, just what is the nature of your malady, Mr. Norman? Huh? What I mean is, uh, are you interested in improving muscle tone, reducing, or... Oh, I'm nervous. Well, I'm sure one of our trained experts can help relieve your attention. Thank you. Miss Gard? Yes. Will you take care of Mr. Norman? Certainly. Hello, Mr. Hello. Norman. How boy are you? Now, why don't you just call me, Bunny? Huh? Yes, maybe so. I will, Bunny. Bye, Mr. Douglas. Yes, dear. We'll see you tomorrow. Now, when you go home, go right to bed and get plenty of sleep. Right. Now, before I make out your chart, may I ask who recommended you to our slurry? Relax, Mabel. I don't want to rub down. I want to see the moose. I'm afraid I don't understand. Bronsky. Don't tell me he's not back there. Are you with the cops? If I was, I'd have come up here in a tank. What makes you think he's here? We have an arrangement. What do you want with him? Now, don't stall, Mabel. You're liable to get him very mad. Well, you can understand. I don't want to see him get hurt. Waldo, get hurt? Hey. I don't like a guy which turns off the TV set while I'm watching. I have come here to entertain you. Did I send for you? Baby, he said you had an arrangement. All right, butt out, butt out. I don't want to talk to my associate. Okay, sure. Why'd you kill her, Waldo? I told you. Hey, I hired you to spring me, not ask questions. I'm not talking about the Spanish broad. I'm talking about Sandra. Now, if I'd killed her, I'd know where she was, wouldn't I? So why am I still looking for her? Because you knew she had the hots for Paul. You knew it all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it. I even, I even called them together once. Or uh, was it twice? How come he's still alive? I got my reasons. He 
pull a knife on me. And I don't like guys which pull knives on me. So I took it away from him and carved my initials on his ass. W.G. What kind of groovy? I didn't know that kid was a shiv man. The best. What makes you such an expert on Munger's son? You're the smart shaman. You figure it out. All right, how's this for a start? He tipped you off to all the Mungar's big games, and you walked in and heisted them. Well, you, uh, you might see we was partners. Mm -hmm. Until the day of the big haul, and then he told the fuzz where to pick you up. It was abroad. She blew the whistle on me. Why would Paul want to screw up a good thing we had going? I heisted over 170 grand. You mean Paul did? Then you split the take, gave your end of it to Sandra, and then he conned her out of it. Dumped her in a drink. The rotten bastard. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? Make a deal. I ain't got time. I'm going after Paul. You'll get him. Maybe this time you can carve your full name. Where? On his ass. Where else? You're not using your night effectively, Dad. I should keep him out in the center, huh? Right. Al. Kid, come in. Sit down. I'm going to the police. Oh, kid. You have to forget about it. You gotta act like it didn't happen. But it did. Sandra's dead. It was an accident. You didn't mean to hurt her, did you? Honey. I know something about this business. If you don't plan to knock them off, it never happened. You get enough pain thinking about things you did on purpose. Al, I just can't keep it in anymore. You can keep everything inside. Sometimes you need help to keep the lid on. Now, don't worry, honey. It'll all be all right. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. She's going to talk. We've got to knock her off. Knock her off? Who the hell do you think you are, Bugs Moran? No, just the son of an ex-folk hero. You pull some colorful capers in your time, Al. That's over. Buried. Is it? Will you tell me who I am besides the son of a hood? What I was, was, you had nothing to do with. Thanks for nothing. But just remember, if she talks, it's your neck. He ain't gonna talk. You're right, Al. She won't talk. I'll make sure of that. You're not gonna touch her. I'm not. You wanna ask them? You're retired, Al. Or did you forget that? I try to go clean, and you drag me down to this. You were going to make up for every lousy thing I was ashamed of. Maybe I never was ashamed. I've been a student, Dad. And you had style. Real style. Hey, take Pop upstairs and turn on the late show. Maybe there's a gangster picture on. Pop, come on, move. Could have been quite a dynasty, the mongers in the forests. Too bad you got that tinge of conscience. Ain't it, though? <clears throat> you must be on some kind of trip, bro. You figure on taking me before the police get to you? <clears throat> cool it, Waldo, hold it. You're pretty stupid, bro. Not nearly as stupid as you if you use a knife on that girl. Now, the cops think I killed Danny Yale, but you and I know different, don't we? We do? Mm-hmm. Now I'm ready to trade. Well, what have you got that I want? 
Him. Me? You. And what do I want with him? Yeah. You need an out for the Lomax murder. He's a perfect patsy. I'm a what? Say, Paul, I don't know if this is important or not. Your father said he'd rather not watch the gangster pictures, so I let him watch the cowboys and Indians. All right? Hiya. Come on. Uh. As I was saying, you need a patsy. I've got one. Her. Wrong. The letter opener she thinks she killed Lomax with wouldn't bruise a grape, but that'd be done by a pro. Like him? Like him. So, I give you Gronsky for Lomax, and I get a patsy for Danny Yale. Hey, that's not a bad idea. One of these bums for Yale, and Gronsky for Sandra. You got a deal. That tears it. <laughs> Talk to you. Now! Right now. I'm a little busy at the moment. Can you take a coffee break? Hey, excuse me a moment. Hey, I want to talk to you before you talk to me. Talk. Did you really mean that about trading me off to that bum? The way you're hitting this season? No way. Hey, you're a nice kid. Homicide, Santini. What do you got? Two of a kind. Not enough. Three kings. Odds or evens? Evens. Three. Two. You'll lose. I always lose. Now get your gear on and go over the side. All right, but I don't understand why we have to do treasure hunting things when I've got $30 million. Kids. Yeah? Never mind about the treasure hunt. Okay. What do you want to do? I'll think of something. 